My, my name is Bert Kohlmann. I am a Mexican-German or German-Mexican. I have both nationalities. I was born in Colombia, later on raised in Mexico. I studied uh, biology. Later on, I went to Germany to do the master's degree. And later on, I went to Australia to do the PhD. And uh, the last 30 years, I worked at Earth University here in, in Costa Rica. But uh, I'm now retired. and. Uh, Still doing research, uh, well, lots of things. I, I've been working in this last month since retirement, and uh, well, well, lots of things to do. Since I was a kid, I liked insects. They always attracted me. Uh, my mother tells me that when we were living in Barranquilla in Colombia, it was only one year or something like that. And my greatest passion was to go to the garden, sit and look at the ant hill, how the ants came in, how they came out. And from there on, just and simply, I developed a, a great passion for, for the insects my whole life. Actually, I became a specialist in dung beetles. So basically, I've been studying all my uh, professional career of dung beetles, every aspect of uh, systematics, biogeography, genetics. So I've been working on dung beetles basically my whole life. Since I started uh, collecting insects in, in Mexico, they attracted my attention. I remember I was well, probably 10 years old when I first met my dung beetle and it was uh, an immediate love affair. And since then, uh, I've been working on, on them. And thankfully, I've been able to describe right now 90 new species of dung beetles, basically from Costa Rica, Mexico, and Central America. And, uh, well, uh, as I say, it's, it's a never-ending story. Uh, when I came here uh, to Costa Rica 30 years ago, we did a first inventory of how many species were known. In Costa Rica, there was, uh, according to the list and literature around 100 species. Right now we have uh, known or described 186 species in Costa Rica and the count is going up. Right now we have three new species which we still have to describe so that will bring the count almost to 190 and I'm sure that we're going to find many many more species and what is interesting is that most of them, are uh, the new ones, come from the mountains, not so much from the rainforest on the, on the lowlands. Yes, I, I like especially the genus Phaneus. It's a very showy, very colorful genus, uh, very variable, so that they are very attractive beetles. Well, very interesting animals. Uh, of course, uh, ecologically, they are very, very useful because they recycle dung. They actually bury it. And by doing that, they do lots of things. I mean, the, the earth becomes more permeable to, to rain and uh, lots of parasites and flies just and simply die whenever this dung is uh, dug into the, in, uh, into the soil. Uh, and it's especially the case of Costa Rica is that per square meter, the country in the world with the most amount of dung beetles and many other things, not just dung beetles. I mean, the biodiversity here is just astounding. And probably much of this has to do with the enormous amount of mountains that you can find here. You, you can actually see the, the effects of climate change already here in the tropical countries, especially here in Costa Rica. There are many reports of how uh, tree lines have been going up in basically the last 20, 20 30 years. And apparently uh, the problem is the tree lines are advancing, but no one is really sure what is coming behind this, this tree line. Apparently there is a depopulation of, uh, of biodiversity because the change is, is, is so so quick so that uh, species don't have enough time to, to adapt to this uh, very quick change in, in pace. And of course, being this uh, a mountain country, 
Well, everything which is living on the top of the mountains, well, most probably it's going to disappear because they have nowhere else to, to climb up. And most probably the paramo, which is more or less the alpine vegetation you find here in Costa Rica, is going to, to be gone in around 100 years' time. Well, we have been trying here in Costa Rica to convey that message. Uh, we have been uh, publishing in the newspapers all these uh, problems, all these situations. So I would say that at least in Costa Rica, the general public is more or less uh, informed and aware of what is going on. I don't know about other, other countries, but uh, Costa Rica has always been very much uh, environmentally oriented and environmentally educated. So I think people here understand and grasp this sort of situations easier than in other parts of the world. Well, this changed a lot. Uh, at the beginning, what we have been calling the classical taxonomy, which is based on morphology, well, people just and simply didn't enter into that field because it was considered dull, uninformative, there was no, not much money put into it. But I think that uh, the way of thinking, of way of analyzing and working with this sort of very basic taxonomy has created a very strong stepstone for the next level, which is now combining this morphology with many other things like distribution, ecology and the molecular genetics. I mean, this marriage of all these fields have basically produced a new taxonomy uh, in which lots of uh, problems have been now understood and solved. So I think there is a revival now in taxonomy by merging and by mixing all these different tools at the same time. Well, I've been invited by Robert Puschendorf from the University of Plymouth to come here and uh, deliver a, a presentation precisely on, on mountain ecology, mountain speciation to a group of students. So we had a meeting yesterday in the, in the afternoon. We, we had a presentation, there was lots of interest generated, lots of questions also asked. And I think it's very important that uh, young people come and, and, and visit, for example, these tropical countries because uh, it's a completely different world, it's a completely different experience. And of course, uh, their understanding is it's going to, to broaden up uh, a lot. The enormous amount of biodiversity here is just uh, flabbergasting. I mean, you, it's sometimes uh, makes you wonder if you are going to be able to, to finish the work you're doing because uh, there are so many things and so many species to study that sometimes you, you believe you won't have enough time for, for doing the job or finishing the job. And one of the things that uh, has been creeping out, out of the studies is the enormous amount of cryptic species. No one had any idea of the enormous amount of crypt cryptic species especially living in the tropics, till all these molecular techniques started to, to, be, to be used. So it's, we have far more biodiversity than we ever dreamt of or even tried to, to calculate. I would say from my experience that they need to know a little bit of everything. I think the age of specialization is gone and I think you can probably understand and produce better results if you manage different fields at the same time. So right now for a biologist I would strongly recommend for example statistics, genetics, uh, molecular genetics, ecology, or co ecology is completely uh, a, basic, uh, a basic field, and, and try to not only understand but try to use all of these different tools at the same time to analyze the same problem from very different points, points of view.